How about you just never failed me? How about that? Uh, yeah. Get, get somebody a high five. Get somebody a high five. Come on. Jesus is good. The Lord Jesus is good. It's going to be a special night in the house. God bless you. Welcome. Delighted that you're here today. First thing we're going to do uh, tonight, we're going to take the Lord's Supper. Is that okay? Is that all right? We're going to take the Lord's Supper. So I'd like for you to prepare for just a moment. If you have, you should have them in your seat with you. Pastor Rick, I'll take that now. <clears throat> so here's the season that we're in uh, at the Crossing Church. Joshua chapter 3 Joshua comes to the people. That's where we get the name, the crossing, is crossing over the Red Sea into his promise. That's where we, we came up with the name years and years ago, and that's what we're all, everybody has a crossing, right? Everybody has a crossing, and everybody has the promise of God in front of them. Everybody does. And so Joshua, in chapter 3, he, Moses had led the people. They'd come to the, the precip of the land, but they didn't go in, right? Everybody say, oh, not me. Say, not me. Not me. Say, I'm going, I'm going in. That's right. And so Joshua comes onto the scene, and Joshua, there was a new spirit, a new group of people, young men and women who had, who had grown up in the Lord, and they were ready to cross over. They were ready to go. And, and so they'd had failure in the past, and Joshua comes to them, and he says, listen, I want to pack your bags. In three days, we're crossing the Jordan. Now, the people could have responded and said, well, who are we going to fight first? I don't know. How tall is the wall? I don't know. Are there fortified cities? I don't know. I've just heard. Are there giants over there? Probably. Is it going to be hairy and scary? I, maybe. Yep. So there's, there's just this uncertainty. How many of you know that there's uncertainty in life? Okay, but what we need is clarity. Clarity. Three days, pack your bags. We're going over this thing. We're crossing over. Three days, pack your bags. We're crossing over. And so it's time in the life of the Crossing Church for leadership to be refined and clarified and to give instruction to the body so that we'd say, I'm not sure about all those things. There's a little bit of uncertainty, but I know exactly what we're going to do, and I know exactly when. Pack your bags. We're crossing over the Jordan. Three days. Here we go. And then you connect to... Hebrews chapter 11, and some of you know there's the hall of faith. And it's by faith. It's that substance of things unseen, the certainty of the things that are unseen. We base our faith in things that we do not see, and we speak that those things as though they were. Right, church? And so it lists all of these people, and Enoch, and Abraham, and Sarah, and Moses, 13 people it goes down. But in verse 29 of Hebrews 11, then it says this. It says, then the people, say the people. people. Say the people. people. Say, I'm a people. I'm Come on. You got the hall of fame and faith. List, 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 it lists 13 people, never mentions Joshua. Never mentions Joshua's name. Do you think Joshua's an important figure? Heck yeah. He led the people into the promised land. Never mentions his name. And I'll tell you why. Because it was time for the somebody to be over and it was time for the body to come into play. It was time for the people, say I'm a people, to cross over. It's time for the people to cross over. Look, it's time for the people to cross over. Listen to me, it's time for the people to cross over. It's time for the people to cross over. Would you open that first part of the element with me? Go ahead and get the peel on the second one. The night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave it to his disciples. And, and as we take this tonight, I, I want you to think about your crossing. 
Why don't you think about your marriage? Why don't you think about your healing? I want you to think about your suffering. I want you to think about, look in the rear view mirror for just a moment and look at some of your mistakes and then go ahead and look at the devil who's looking at you in the rear view mirror and say, I'm not staying there. I'm not staying there. I'm crossing over. I am crossing. The night he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat and as often as you do, do so in remembrance of me. That night he took the cup. Wow. Could you imagine that night? He said, this is the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant which has been shed for you and for all of mankind that your sin may be forgiven. Come on, before we take this, I want you to, to say this. You don't have to shout this. Listen, say, I'm God's masterpiece. Say, I'm designed for purpose. I have a destiny. Jesus designed me. God orders my steps. And I'll follow. some praise in the house. Can we get some shouts of praise in the house? Huh? Man. <laughs> Delighted that you're here. Special night, night of presbyteria. I want to introduce our presbyters, all right, our presbyteron, if you will. Pastor Tom Lane is here. One of his daughters is here, Lisa Corley. <laughs> And Mark Job, they're making their way to the stage. Would you give them a big hand, church? So what we're gonna, what you're gonna see tonight is you're gonna see some candidates, and uh, they've been praying and writing. So they're from Dallas. They're from Gateway Church. Um, we're delighted that you're here. Come on, can we give them another big hand? <clears throat> and so we're going to invite a couple up that we know, but they, uh, they may know them, but they didn't know before tonight that they were praying for them. So all they knew was couple number one, and you're going to see them come up, then couple number two, they're going to come up, and then single female, she's going to come up last, and they're going to take the word of God, 1 Corinthians 14, and they're going to speak edification and life and the blessing of the Lord. So they've heard from the Lord for couple number one, couple number two, and a, and a single female. And you're going to see that interaction on the stage. How many of you know it takes faith and grace to hear from God and to bless another person? Okay. All right. So you're going to see that take place. We're going to do that. These are called candidates, okay? And then when that is finished, they're going to do words in season. And so they're going to take the microphone. They're going to walk through the auditorium, and they're going to listen to God on the spot as they're walking through the auditorium, and God may have a word for you, okay? So if you're wearing red, raise your hands, and we'll pick you out. <laughs> so lots of times, depending on what your background is, prophetic utterance or prophecy sometimes uh, meant something different than it means today. I want you to know it's only for edification. It's only for encouragement. It's only for building up. Okay. That's what it's for. All right. Um, and, I, and I think Pastor Tom has said before, he said, uh, they're, they're not perfect. I think they're perfect. Okay. Uh, so if something, if something just doesn't fit this season or whatever, just go ahead and stick that in your pocket. We're going to be recording each one of these words both to the candidates and words in season. We're going to record them. We'll get your name, 
And so the design is that after they speak the word to you, that you could come sit with one of the pastors of the church and we can walk you through that, okay? Second level, second layer. If you hear a word that is for an individual, whether they're the candidates or they're in the congregation, and that word applies for you, put it in your pocket. It's for you, okay? How many of you need God to speak to you? Right. Yep. Double hands. <laughs> Double hands. Need God to speak. And so be listening for what God is saying to you. Be listening to what God is saying to you. Okay? Pastor Tom, did I leave anything out that's in, in, important? I left something out that was extremely important? No. <laughs> he said, no, it was perfect. He said, it was perfect. Okay. Uh, are, are we ready to have our first candidate? Okay, here we go. Would you welcome to stage one of our executive pastors, Pastor Curtis Boozer and his wife, Julie. Okay. Now, you should have a printed piece with you that will help you identify with the candidates so that you can connect. If you don't know who they are, there's a little information there. And again, they did not know that it was going to be Curtis and Julie on the stage. They just knew couple number one, okay? So we're going to watch God show out. God bless you. All right, I get to go first. And uh, I want to say something to you, Julie, because I, I know if Mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. <laughs> I was praying over you. Of course, I didn't know who it was. I just had couple number one. I was praying over you, and... I got so excited as uh, I began to get this from the Lord. And um, I heard the phrase, Martha, Martha. I want to read you the passage this comes from. It says, now it happened when, this is uh, Luke 10. Now it happened as they went that Jesus entered a city, uh, pardon me, that Jesus entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him, and she said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you're worried, about, you're worried and troubled about so many things. That's found in Luke 10, 38 through 41. This is what I believe I, I heard from the Lord. Every time you hear someone talk about Martha, they end up with it would be better to be a Mary at the feet of Jesus all the time. But you and I know that nothing ever gets done unless we have some Marthas on the team. Can I get an amen? Marthas are made to get the job done, and you are a get the job done girl. The Lord's not trying to change you into a Mary. I come today to tell you that you can be Martha and not be stressed out. And I believe the Lord said, tweak one little thing. Work a little, worship a little, and don't forget to play a little. There's a new peace coming on your life. You're going to find a new rhythm. You used to laugh more. Something happened that tried to steal your joy. The joy of the Lord's coming back upon you in this new season. By November, you will see a huge breakthrough, and in the spring, there will be a new life. Drink it in. Enjoy his presence. There's a, there's a portion of this passage that really stood out to me. And um, I think it's a portion of the passage we, we, we overlook. Because you see, I, I believe you're not just a get it done girl. You're a presence of God girl. Verse 39, after it says that she had a sister named Mary, it makes this, this statement. It says, who also sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word. Mary wasn't the only one sitting at the feet of Jesus. Mary was not the only one hearing his word. Martha was first to sit at his feet. That's what the word also means. It was kind of like, oh, by the way, Mary also sat at his feet. But Martha, you were first at his feet. Martha was the first to love his word. The Lord does not come today to try to make you a Mary. He made you a Martha, a woman who loves the presence of God, who loves the word of God, and can still get the job done. Amen. Woo. 
I got so excited, I couldn't wait to meet Martha. I didn't know if your name was going to be Martha. It didn't matter. I knew you were a Martha. And Curtis, um, I heard this about you. You have a heart like David. Are we supposed to give both words or just, okay. I, I didn't want to just take the microphone, you know. All right. <laughs> Curtis, you have a heart like David. Hey, Curtis, right? Okay. You have a tender heart for the people of God like a shepherd boy. But you also have a fierce heart of war concerning the enemies of God. I don't know what you did, and I want to say it the way I heard it, okay? Uh, are you the one from Texas? This makes a whole lot of sense now. There you go. I don't know what you did to tick off the enemy. But he gets real nervous when you pray. Whatever you hold on to in prayer, God holds on to. I want to define the word fierce. It means powerful, strong, forceful, unrelenting, with a never-quit mentality to see the battle finished and the enemy destroyed completely. It is a fearlessness on steroids. I kept hearing the word tenacious related to you. Here's what tenacious, how tenacious is defined. Keeping a firm hold on something, refusing to turn loose, relentlessly committed to seeing something through to the end. As a child, you were called hard-headed. As an adult, you've been called hard-headed. I'm going to read you that right here. Okay, just want to let you know I didn't steal that from you. But that's not it at all. Ten tenacity is a gift from God. Amen. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. It's a valuable weapon in the hands of the Lord. You're like the final pitcher of the game. I started to put down the Rangers, and I thought, they're not going to go for that in Florida, but that would have meant something to you. I wish I'd have written it down. I'm sorry, Lord. I'll write it down next time. You're like the final pitcher of the game, the closer. You come to bring the heat and finish what was started. I asked the Lord, why is there so much opposition around you? Why is there so much opposition around what you're trying to do? Here's what I believe I heard. Your, your calling is vital to the advancement of the kingdom of God. The enemy does not like it. Therefore, therefore, pressing into the Lord in prayer is imperative. Lead teams around you to pray fervently. The only way to be successful in what God's called you to do is to pray a lot. Not praying out of fear, but asking the Lord for strategy. That's what the prayer team's all about, strategy. When you have the strategy of the, of the Lord for advancement, you have the advantage over the enemy. You're a man with authority over, you're a man with authority over the enemy with a tender heart for the people of God. The best undercover policeman is the one with a tender heart. No one ever suspects that he's packing, but he is. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I really feel like, am I on? Trey. I mean, we could just stop right there. That was pretty amazing. I just love, love seeing God just move and love on you people. And of course, we met you guys earlier today, but had no idea that you guys were going to be candidates. And so we are just so grateful that you guys are in a position to receive because we know that God's wanting to speak to you so specifically and Julie, this is what I heard when I was praying for you. I heard the word powerhouse. I actually heard the word preacher. I know a lot was talked about being a Martha, but I believe there's a preaching gift inside of you. And I heard the word legacy. You have been handed a legacy that you are carrying. And I also heard that you are leaving a legacy that will impact on those that will follow after you. I heard that you are meant to be on the stage don't be intimidated by this stage, but you're meant to come out of hiding. What you have to offer, people need to hear. So don't be intimidated by the position that God gives you because it's not you putting yourself in the limelight, but it's what Jesus is birthing inside of you that needs to be heard. I heard that you're like a good cup of coffee. You help wake people up out of their sleepy state. You make the atmosphere, the room smell so much better, and people find that they just can't get enough of you. 
You have been on a ride with the Lord that has taken you longer than you thought and has had many stops along the way. I heard that you have arrived at the place where you've been trying to get. I also heard the word children, and I believe that children are so important to you. And the Lord wants to remind you that he's got this. There's something that you've been battling with the Lord, and he just wants you to put it at ease. It. He says, I got it. I heard the word protector, defender. And you are welcoming in those that feel neglected. You are here to help grow this church. In the Bible, Solomon saw over the building of the temple, and you are going to be used to oversee the building up of God's people. There is creativity and resources ready to be handed to you, and all you have to do is ask. Where you have been desiring God to take you doesn't even compare to where he wants to take you. Guard what you have with your husband. There is something really special about the two of you. Don't let anything come between it. What the enemy will try to do when he knows that there's some force to be reckoned with, he'll do what he can to try to come between you. And I just want you to be aware of that. Don't be fearful of it, but just to be aware of what the enemy may try to do. And if you will put God, marriage, family, and ministry in that order, then you will be able to see God take and do through you more than you can even imagine. So bless you. I think he's already believed these things for you, and now it's time for you to believe for yourself. So you take those, and you believe, and you take them to heart, because God is doing something today in you that he's wanting you to say, I've been speaking all along, and today I want you to believe it for yourself. So he's a good man for you, but you, you both are amazing, but I'm just excited to see what you're going to do with this and where God's going to take you. Curtis, when I was praying for you, the, I heard the word shift. And there's, there's a shift that God is doing that hasn't maybe at times made complete sense, but its benefit will bring the relief that you have been needing. I heard don't see it for anything other than it's to help you. Trust the process. There is a greater capacity that is coming for what you are wanting to do. There are a lot of ideas that you have in your head, and some days there doesn't feel like enough time to get everything done. You are a good developer, you're good at processing things, and you're also a good communicator. I heard a new measure of grace and mercy are going to flow out of you. You have a high expectation of yourself that you can also maybe put a high expectation on others. But what's really great about you is you have such a teachable spirit. Cultivate that in your quiet time to hear his voice. Try to maintain what God's will is and only, only focus on that because what you want to make sure is that you're not doing it on your own and that you're not trying to sustain for the long haul on your own power because what will happen is that you'll find yourself that you're tired and that you won't be able to finish with the same strength and endurance if you try to do it on your own. It hasn't always been modeled or shown to you how to do things, but you have looked for mentors to help guide you along the way. There's a mentorship calling inside of you that will be a part of changing young men's lives and help see their destiny fulfilled. Look for ways to speak purpose and encouragement to them and be willing to make time for them. I heard you have a father anointing on you and you have a prophetic gift and you have a real pastor's heart. You are seen as a threat to the enemy. Don't let that make you be fearful or afraid, but let you know that you are making an impact for God's kingdom, and you are right where you're meant to be. Bless you. Those are just some pretty doggone good words. I, I, uh, that's awesome. Well, I've known you guys for a little while, but like has been said, I didn't know you were candidates tonight, and I think something that's special about that is uh, we, we pray when we pray for these words that God would give us eyes to see the candidate couples the way that he sees them, and I think there's some things, maybe even things that will be surprising to you from these words, but they don't surprise God, and uh, they're, they're from his heart to you. So Julie, I, I'll start with you as well. The, the first thing I saw for you was this um, this statement, well done, daughter of God, well done. There's, there's been faithful diligence, 
a loyalty that has been expressed out of your life for a long time. And the Lord comes to say, he's seen that. He's seen the, the faithfulness and diligence of, of your effort, your service to him. And he says, well done. Man, wouldn't, wouldn't all of us like to hear, well done. Well done, daughter of God. Uh, you're a rock of service and of love, gentle in heart and demeanor, but tenacious in spirit. There's a tenaciousness about, about you that, that is precious and meaningful to God. You're a good communicator, better than you give yourself credit for. I think there's a, you're a, a wordsmith. Uh, you, you smith well words, but you communicate uh, from those words a, as well in a powerful way. Um, a strong gift of discernment is in your life, and it leads you into ministry encounters. Uh, when you walk into a room or you encounter people, you, you have a, a sense. It's a Holy Spirit gift of discernment in you. You have a sense that something's going on. There's not, not something right here. I'm, we're not getting the full picture of what's going on. And uh, it's not because you're mistrustful. It's because the Holy Spirit works through you in a gift of discernment. You love leading people into freedom and out of bondage. And there's a gift there. Uh, part of that, what that discernment does is it enables you to identify where the strongholds of the enemy have been established and bring, bring people into freedom. So I believe that the, the gift of teaching, uh, of ministry, there's a counseling gift that is present in you to help, help people. Uh, your love for people and your gregarious nature sets people free and at ease and opens ministry doors for your behalf, on, on their behalf. So... Uh, work, work well and, and allow God to use you in powerful ways, Julie. <clears throat> Curtis, I saw this uh, for you. The hand of God has been on your life since you were a little boy. There's a heritage that is in your family that has uh, impacted you and your life. There, uh, like Samuel, you were dedicated to the Lord in his service and you've walked in that service. The voice of the Lord has been clear and meaningful to you, and you've been uncompromised in your service of that. You, you love the word, and if you see it in the word, and the word has application in your life, you have remained uncompromised in your service of God and his word. You're capable in ministry, and you, you're able. You, you have revelation in your teaching. You're, you're able to teach and give that revelation in a powerful way. Uh, you bring people to the place of being moved to change and there is a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit that's present in your life. A strong gift of faith makes you stable in trials and change. Uh, unwavering in your belief and love for God's word, you stand true to extend and exalt his word into situations of ministry. As has already been said, I just affirm, there is a prophetic voice in you to this house. And it's, it, it's a voice that is anchored in the word, but it also has the expression of the leading and work of the Holy Spirit uh, through you. You'll have revelation impact in the words that you share. So lead with sensitivity and pastor with authority. God's hand is on you. God bless you. Amen and amen and amen. Back. Wow. I'm, I'm, I always marvel at what God does as, as, as this process unfolds in front of us. Um, and these words are, they're amazing and so fitted for both of you. And um, we're, we're extraordinarily blessed. They came from Texas. They were at the same church for almost 30 years in Texas. And they've come here to help us pioneer this work going forward here at the Crossing Church. Would you give them a huge hand? And would you welcome Wade and Heather Snyder to the platform? Sure, either one is fine. <laughs> Let me give this to you, Pastor Tom.
You're right, no pressure. I get to go first. Uh, what, you know what, you guys really, no, no, I was just, you know, sometimes we just take in the moment because there really is just something so unique that God does in this moment. And so even though we're the ones up here wanting to deliver words that we are believing that God's wanting to speak to you. It really is just finally we're able to see the faces of the people that we've been praying for. And it does something in our hearts. We just get excited because God just does something so powerful through presbytery. And so I'm just excited for you guys. You guys are just a, a power, powerful couple. I'm going to start with you, Heather. And this is what I heard for you. I heard the words expressive, joyful. You are a beautiful expression of the Lord. I heard don't hold back. Don't refrain. You need to move forward. You've been asking the Lord for confirmation, and today he's wanting to confirm for you that, is, that it is him. I heard that you are a fighter. The devil has come hard after you, and you've not let him win. You are faithful, and it is your deep commitment to God as to the reason you are where you are today. There is a writing gift in you. And the words that you write have a voice of victory, not a voice of defeat. You don't give up easily, and at times it's kind of worn them out just a little bit. But I want to tell you that it's a good, good trait that you have. You help people to want more for themselves. You help them to silence the negative voices that they hear. And you help them to believe in the verse that says God will work all things together for our good to those that call on his name. You are an identity definer. You are a restorer of hope. Don't be confused that greater the position means greater the influence. Because obedience to the voice of the Lord will give the opportunity for God's power to, to be displayed through your life. When you feel at times that he has been quiet, I'm here to tell you that he's not been quiet. He's not turned his back on you. And remember that he is always at work and he is always with you. I want to end with this image that I saw. And I saw this image of you sitting in a rocking chair and you were cradling something. And you were rocking back and forth. And I believe there's a promise that you've been holding tight. And it got, it's something that God gave you long ago. And the image that I saw is that you are finally going to be in a position where God is going to let you receive that promise that he gave a long time ago. So bless you. Well, Wade, this is what I heard over you. I heard you're unique. You like to do. <laughs> I've got a few adjectives, so hopefully, hopefully they, they identify. But you like to do things differently than others. You don't want to do the same thing over and over again. You want your impact to be one of a kind. And you like to go over and beyond what is asked of you. You are attentive to detail and wants to leave things better after you have been a part of it. There isn't much that you actually can't do. Your family is not a family that is meant to blend in. You are meant to stand out, right. but it will be for all the right reasons. The great heroes of the Bible are not admired for what they didn't do, but they are admired for what they did do. And you, Wade, are a hero in the faith. You are admired by people for the strength you carry, the determination that you have, and for the faith that God will come through. You are an important piece to this house. But I also, I wrote it like peace, like P-I-E-C, but I also believe you are an important piece, P-E-A-C-E, -E, in this house. If you wrote a tagline for the church, I believe it would say, you belong here. I saw this image of a log-type cabin, cabin that functioned as a retreat center. And it was a place that where it provided a place for men to get away and for you to be able to use that time to pour purpose and identity into them. 
I also saw you being used within your extended family. There's a great wisdom in you and a supernatural understanding that God shares with you. And this will be a key in God revealing himself in a greater way to the ones that you love. I want to remind you, though, that boundaries are okay. It doesn't mean you, can, you keep everyone out. It just allows you to control the kind of access that they have. Don't feel pressure to say yes to everything. You don't want to run out of energy and have no endurance left when your race is done. Trust in God's timing. Be present in the moment and create room for God to speak to you. And then you will see him move through you that would not only bring life to those hearing it, but wait, it's going to bring life to you. Bless you. Man, this is good, isn't it? Well, um, wait, I'm going to start with you. When, when I started praying for you as couple two, the first thing that uh, I heard was Isaiah 61, 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim uh, to the, liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of God's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. There's so many things that I think are reflective of God's work in your life in that, beginning with, uh, he has anointed me to bring. You, there's an evangelistic gift that is a part of your life. You, you have not met a stranger. You don't, you're not fearful in new situations. You're bold as a lion to proclaim what God has said. And you stand against the strongholds of the enemy wherever you encounter them. Uh, you bring the, the word of God and the work of God. Uh, and, and it's good news to people who are, are, don't understand or don't know. You bring good news uh, to their work. And he has sent you. Not only do you bring, but then he, he sent you. And the sending part of that is so powerful because it, it involves healing of the brokenhearted. It involves proclaiming liberty to the captives. It, you, you are a person with multiple talents. You're a 10 talent kind of guy that whatever situation you're in, you can pull out this situation to meet a need or another one, but you proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to those, uh, those who are bound. And then you declare the favor of God. People like to hear you come because you're not negative and you're, you're not legalistic in your declaration. You proclaim favor of what God is going to do and you call them out of the bondage that they're in into the favor of God. And so they, they're excited when you show up. They're not uh, frustrated uh, by your work. And uh, the day of vengeance, you, you speak the truth. There is a day coming. But it wasn't intended to be a, a, a punishment for people. Uh, and you declare that. Come, come in. Come, come into the house. Get away from the, the vengeance that is to come is part of your declaration work uh, to comfort all who mourn. There's a compassion in your life that is reflected there. So this charge I heard for you, uh, bring it. <laughs> bring it. Bring it. <laughs> Lay your hands on people. Speak words of healing and bring, bring deliverance into their life and be bold for God because he has filled you and called you and placed you in a powerful way. <laughs> so Heather, I, I, I saw this uh, related to you two are a Barbie and Ken couple. <laughs> you're a match set. You're, you're so perfect and you're stronger together than you are apart. But you're, you're individually very gifted. But the giftings flow sort of in connection with each other. And um, so the first thing I... I wrote was God put you with him. He, he, he's lo yoked you not only in marriage and in family, but in ministry. There's a partnership uh, that goes there. 
You're a partner with him in life and in ministry. Your ears are tuned to God's voice. Your heart is willing and able to believe. And you are a woman of faith. And, and in your faith, you push him and he pushes you. you. You call him out when he's not living up to what God has uh, called the two of you to do. You inspire and challenge him in, in the work of God because you are faithful in that work yourself. Uh, you are a capable communicator, knowledgeable in the word. You live the life you proclaim for others to see. And it's a noble work that you do. Uh, some have tried to fit you into a mold that doesn't fit. They ain't going to do that. Because you, you know who you are. You're confident in that. And you move, you move forward. So the word I heard for you is be courageous. God has set you in a good place. Obedient in faith. Be bold for God is doing great things in you. And you will see miracles because of the faith and the expression uh, out of your life. You're a, a sweet couple and a precious, you're, you're well fit in this house. God bless you both. <laughs> I hear you. Well, Wade and, and Heather, I, the strangest thing happened when I began to pray over you guys. I kept seeing all these word pictures and uh, of these very uh, prestigious places. And um, Heather, I'm going to start with you. When I prayed over you, I kept seeing a rose garden. Not carpet roses, but long stem red roses. You know, the expensive kind. <laughs> I kept seeing the rose garden at the White House in Washington, D.C. Mm. Nothing conveys I love you better than, than red roses. But apart from being a symbol of love, the red rose also stands for courage, talent, passion, respect, beauty, and sincerity. The deep red rose means that you are ready for commitment and have a deep passion for, for that person or an individual. The Lord says that's who you are. You're a woman of courage, talent, passion, respect, beauty, and sincerity. A woman of great honor and prestige, even majestic and presidential. I felt like some of it spoke of how you carry yourself, but it also speaks of the way you see people and the way you... you uh, you treat them. A woman deeply committed with deep passion for God and the things of God. Yeah. You've never been half-hearted, especially when it comes to loving and serving Jesus. I couldn't leave this rose thing alone, so let me keep on doing it, okay? The rose is such an interesting flower. The petals, the fragrance, the thorn, there's nothing like it. All of them are distinctive characteristics of a rose. I heard the Lord say that your life has been like a red rose. There have been seasons of beauty, seasons of fragrance, but also seasons of thorns. You hate the seasons of thorns. You wish you could forget the thorny seasons. But the Lord wants to remind you that it was in the thorny seasons of pain that made you grow in your faith. It was the thorny seasons that made the beautiful fragrance seasons worth it. They're all part of your story. So don't despise those times, but thank the Lord for them because of who they've made you to be. You see, you were so perfect, God had to put you with a man to mess you up. I'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> don't laugh, he did it to you too. Roses are not just meant to be admired, but they're meant to be given to the one you love. They communicate something from the heart. One rose is said to mean love at first sight. Three roses is traditional three month anniversary gift to simply say, I love you. Six roses, I wanna be yours. Nine roses, I wanna be with you forever. 10 roses, perfect 10 means you are perfection. 12 roses means I love you completely. The Lord comes to say, your life has been a series of red roses presented to me. 2 Corinthians 2.15 says that your life is a sweet aroma to the Lord. Yeah, it's good, and today, he says, I present you with 12 red roses. I love you completely. You're mine.
I felt like I, I, I didn't just hear. I felt like I, I, I felt the heart of the Lord towards you. Now, I don't mind telling you, I cried a couple times writing these things down. going, Lord, how am I going to make it through this? I just felt like you needed to hear the Lord say to you that he loves you. And uh, he sees you. And he, he made you, but he understands you. And um, good, he just loves you completely through and through and through and through. Okay? All right. Wade? <laughs> you are old school. You do things by the book. That's a good thing. When I prayed over you, I kept seeing the, North, the uh, New York City skyline, predominantly the Empire State Building. I, I just so hesitated writing what I wrote. And I argued with the Lord, and I just wrote it down anyway. And then I, I saw you as a little boy. And what I'm about to read to you meant something to you as a kid. It's like these are the kinds of things that just jazzed you up. So I'm going to read it. That's what I felt like was the emotion behind it. Here we go. The Empire State Building is a 102-story building completed in 1931. The building stands a total of 1,454 feet tall, including its antenna. And that's detail. Its name is derived from Empire State, the nickname of New York which is commonly believed to refer to the state's wealth and resources. The Empire State Building stood as the world's tallest building for nearly 40 years until the completion of the World Trade Center North Tower in late 1970. Following the September 11 attack in 2001, it was again the tallest building in New York until the new One World Trade Center was completed April 2012. The word empire speaks of an extensive group of states or countries, kingdoms or territories under a single supreme authority. I heard the phrase, build it right the first time and it will stand the test of time. And that's who you are. You will not cut corners. You will pay the price to do it right, even if it takes longer than expected. The Lord is building his empire on earth. We call it the kingdom of God. He has gifted you to manage more than just one thing. You have the brain power, the gifting, the anointing to oversee multiple things all at one time. I saw thick ledgers and multiple projects and no stress on your face. You're wired for details and lots of them. If you don't know how to do something, you'll study it out until you do. You're not afraid to build and you're not afraid to rebuild. Rebuild lives, rebuild programs, rebuild processes, rebuild procedures. Whatever assignment you're given, you take it to heart. And you give it your all. That's good, Mark. I don't ever remember reading this verse until yesterday. Dan I know I did because I've read the book of Daniel. But Daniel 14, 17 says, This decision is by the decree of the watchers, meaning those around are watching. And the sentence by the word of the holy ones, in order that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. And he gives it to whomever he wills. And he sets over it the lowest of men. I heard people saying about you, how did he get that promotion? And you've said, it's all God. It's all God. It's all God. And I'm going to tell you something. You had something to do with it because of your humility and your persistence to chase after God. And not cut corners, the Lord promoted you. You're a man of authority because you understand how to live under authority. Because you've humbled yourself, the Lord has chosen to lift you up and use your life to make a difference. Your life is, it is, it is significant, but your legacy will be even greater. God bless you. Jesus. <laughs> Close. 25 years, career, military, special operations. Can we thank God for Heather and Wade? So, and the words that were spoken over them are so precise. God has promoted the two of them. They're now the Tampa campus pastors here at the Crossing Church. 
And, uh, and they have five kids. Can, can, yeah. Can we, can we thank God? So the promotion part of it, I, I just wanted to comment to, there might be some that would say exactly what you said. How, how did that happen? And it's because of the, the watchers and the heavenly places that have said these two are deserving to, uh, to take that position. So God bless you. We love you. And would you uh, welcome Fiona Reed? Well, we got a little glimpse of the powerhouse that encompasses this woman right here because we came to the prayer hour today and she really is such a fierce and pra- I mean the prayers that come out of this this little body I mean I'm like I love it when it's like a surprise it's like what it, it was the most anointed hour and God moved through her and you guys are blessed to have her in your house. So when I was praying for you, I didn't know who you were, but I'm excited to share with you what, what's on uh, my heart. And what, what I saw when I was praying for Fiona is I saw that of a tree that was firmly planted. And from of it came lots and lots of good fruit. And in the Bible, we read about the fruits of the Spirit, and I believe that there could be a written description about you next to each one of them, because you, Fiona, display all of them. You are someone that is not easily swayed, and you are confident in who you are. You are a glue that holds many things together, and people don't have to wonder if you're going to do what is expected of you. But I also heard that you have a little bit of a competitiveness in you, but it makes everyone want to have you on their team. There is some pressure that you're feeling about a decision, and I want to encourage you to take a deep breath. God is wanting it to be more about you and him and not to rely on man to make it for you. There is not one thing that you've done to derail God's process I heard, get your passport ready, because there are some new stamps that are going to be added to your passport. I also heard that there's a learner inside of you, and there's so much that God is still wanting to teach you and what he's wanting to show you. I heard, be open to the opportunities that come your way, even if they don't seem to fit in what you think the plan is. Because there is a purpose that God has in it. And I wanted to remind you that he is picking you to play a part in the opportunities that come your way. Steward, you, it's clear that you are stewarding well the gift that God's given you. But I know that this is just the catalyst to launch you into so much more than what God has you. This house will be vital in playing a part of what God's doing. But I just want to encourage you that the borders that God has for you are going to go way beyond this house and you're going to impact many people because of what God is is doing inside of your heart. And you know what? You open that mouth. You don't let anyone ever tell you to stop talking because when you open your mouth, the, the words of God just exude from you and you are going to be a part of changing lives for generations to come, Fiona. So I just want to bless you. Good job. Good job. Fiona, I notice you have a, an accent. You from East Texas or <laughs> North Texas? 
course, when I, when I prayed over you and got these words, all I had written down was single girl, okay? Hmm. Um, I feel like the Lord gave me two things for you. So number one, the Lord comes today to confirm your value. You're no longer a diamond in the rough. The Lord's been cutting on you for years. He's, bring, he's bringing you out to present you to the world. This presbytery is more than just an event in your life. It's a reveal party. The Lord is bringing who you really are out of hiding to present you to the church and to the world. She just said, get your passport ready. I have a sneaky suspicion there are more people tuning in to y'all's prayer hour once a month than just those in Tampa. Mm. Your value is more than the original appraisal. You praised yourself as a young girl when you were a diamond in the rough. But that's not who you are today. You're more valuable than you personally believe. You don't see yourself the way others see you. You don't see yourself the way the Lord sees you. He wants you to catch a glimpse of what he sees. During this season of your life, he's readjusting your focus. Spirit of revelations coming on you. You're going to see things differently. You're going to see yourself differently. Proverbs 31.10, that dreaded verse that women read. <laughs> Some say, God, please give me a word from Proverbs 31. <laughs> I believe I got a word for you out of Proverbs 31. Simple phrase. She's worth more than rubies. I heard, I heard that after I heard that you were no longer a diamond in the rough. And I thought to myself, I wonder if diamonds are worth more than rubies. I looked it up. Siri will tell you. <laughs> On average, flawless diamonds tend to be more expensive than rubies per carat. Diamonds are used to say, I love you. Diamonds are used to seal covenants. The Lord comes to seal this with you today. You're loved and accepted, and that settles it. That's number one. Number two, the Lord also comes today to confirm his favor on your life. I saw that you were a faithful, hardworking servant to the Lord. He wants to make a slight adjustment in your thinking. He wants to shift one word in that sentence. You've been a servant to the Lord, and he wants you to be a servant of the Lord. You've worked hard so that you would be accepted and not rejected. He wants you to know that you're already loved and accepted. And you can work from a grateful heart of grace. The Lord comes to free your heart from the pressure of performance and the fear of rejection. No more working for God. He's called you to walk with Him. Your work ethic for years has been based on performance. But today you have His favor on your life. And his favor for life. I, I heard this phrase. I heard this phrase years ago. And I hesitated writing it down. I put it in my notes. I took it out of my notes. I put it back in my notes. And I highlighted it. <laughs> no more singing for supper. No more fear that you're not enough. Favor. Grace. Favor. Grace. They're yours. Bless you. This is just special, isn't it? God, there's a love for you. <clears throat> Fiona, I, I want to record you saying, good morning, Tom, and put it on my phone. <laughs> Because I think that's what God would say <laughs> in your voice. Good morning, Tom. <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> I saw this over you, Fiona. A people person deluxe. Sensitive, loyal, fun. You're a connector of generations. A, a really capable teacher. You inspire as you instruct. And you're able to instruct, uh, and unusually so, uh, generations above and generations below. Don't ever let someone look down on your youthfulness or the fact that you're a female. You have heaven's authority when you speak and when you teach. 
Your love for God is pure and deep, and many look up to you. Many look up to you, uh, including me, by the way. I, I think you're amazing. You're being prepared for a broad base of influence. What you're doing uh, for God today will have great benefit and application for the work of ministry ahead. And I, I, I didn't have this, I don't have the sense that you're anxious or you're, um, you're, you're chafing under what your assignment is here. But um, there's big things ahead. And when, when I thought or saw that, immediately Proverbs 3 came to mind. You, you know it well. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. You're going to be tugged and pulled from multiple directions. And there will be things that look good, things that sound good. There will be things that maybe even appeal to you, but you wait until God says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. Don't let, don't, don't let the world or even good things pressure you. Uh, in, in, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. And then I saw one other verse for you, uh, Fiona, Isaiah 35, 4. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. If you live with the dependence, and I know you do, with the dependence on God that is true to that word, you'll have the authority to tell people what that word represents with power and might and confidence, and many will follow your direction. God bless you. Hold on one second. Pastor Mark. I just want to add a, a clarification. As I was sitting there, um, I felt like the Lord said that the shifting that, that sight change, that seeing yourself different, is connected to the phrase about the flawless diamond is worth more than rubies per carat. And I want, I want to tell you, you've never seen yourself as flawless. None of us do as human. But that's how God sees you, through the blood of Jesus Christ. And he wants you to see yourself the way he sees you. Such purity, such completeness, flawless cut diamond by the grace of God. Okay. Amen. So Fiona, before you, <laughs> is that perfect for her or what? Huh? Can we encourage Fiona? We've seen great promotion on her, had the conversation a couple of weeks ago that she'll be uh, preaching and teaching on a first Wednesday here very soon as God is elevating her. And so we want to we wanna close this section and just pray over Fiona. Um, just feel like there's a special, there's something God is doing to expand you to great territory, and, and we want to confirm that, okay? <laughs> Pastor, would you like to start? Sure, yeah. Why don't you stretch a hand forward here? Lord, we just lay our hands on Fiona today, and we're, we're declaring these words to be your words over her life, these words to be true and right. And Lord, they only represent a part of what you are going to fulfill through her life. They give a clarity of direction, a clarity of purpose, a, a, a broader perspective of understanding. But Lord, we ask that you would fulfill it in great measure. We pray today that you would surround her with the protection that is the Holy Spirit's uh, mighty work, that, Lord, there would be a grace that covers her life, that, Lord, you would, would fulfill every dream and desire that she has as a loving father that you would meet and uh, exceed the desires and expectations of her life. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for lengthening mm -hmm. her tent cords. Mm -hmm. Thank you for loving her in the secret places. God, thank you for speaking to her so powerfully and publicly today. And so Lord, as, as was spoken over her, we introduce her to every realm today that you would thank desire you. her in. Yes. We thank you for her giftedness. Mm -hmm. 
We thank you for protection from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you, God, that you have chosen her before the foundation of the world. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Amen. Um, wow, it's 8.40. How did that happen? What happened? Uh, here's, what I, here's what I would like to do. Um, I'd like to, uh, why don't we stand a second? I'm going to dismiss you to grab your kiddos, okay? Because I will get in trouble if we, if we don't let you go get your kids, all right? Is this, can I get a confirmation it's 8.40? 8.41, confirmation? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me pray for us. Go grab your kiddos, and we're going to do a few words in season. Pastor of Children's Ministry said we could wait till nine. That's a sign wonder from God. So I just want to say this publicly. It's not my fault. I I love all y'all. Okay, um, so I do want to, if you do want to grab your kiddos, you can do that and come, come back in. We're going we're gonna to sort of shift into uh, a words in season here for just a little while, another 20 minutes or so. Father, thank you that you've spoken powerfully. Thank you that you continue to speak powerfully. Thank you for our family from Gateway. Thank you for apostolic covering. Thank you for uh, words that encourage and edify and build us up in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated if you'd like to. You can grab your kiddos. lady right back here. Yes. You, uh-huh. What's your name? Uh-huh. Renaya. Do you mind standing, Renaya? Renai? Vanai. Vernaya. Vernaya. Vernaya, nice to meet you. Here's, here's what I saw when, when I was... Uh, drawn to you. Uh, Do you know what a fulcrum is? A fulcrum is a point to which uh, a lever rests and supported on and it pivots, sort of like a teeter-totter, the little edge of the teeter-totter. Something that that plays an essential role in an activity or an event. Uh, There is something that you have been working on, something that you have been desiring, it's been frustrating, and the fulcrum of that event is off just a little bit. And uh, it, it, I believe what God wants to do is just tell you, it's not anything you're doing. You can, just, you can just rest at ease. He's in the process of adjusting the fulcrum. And the, the passage I got for you was Psalm 37 and verse uh, 3, wait on the Lord, uh, 37, uh, 34, wait on the Lord and keep his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. And so stand firm. You're going to see what, what you've been desiring. And it'll, it, he'll make the adjustment if you'll just hold on. It's not about your effort. It's going to be his work of grace in your life. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> this lady right here in the middle. Uh, yes, ma'am. Would you stand up and tell me your name? E- Elaine? Elon? Elani. Elani. We get it right? Okay, sorry about that. Um, I just heard that scripture, weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. The night in that passage really speaks of a season of struggle. And for you, it's been a long night. But the night is over. The tears have produced an overflow of intercession in heaven. He's turning it into rain of blessing. I want to remind you, weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And I believe the Lord says to you, good morning. God bless you. Hi. What's your name? Yes. 
star. Sir, can you stand up? <laughs> oh, what an amazing name you have. Because this is what I heard the Lord say, that there has been some labels that people have tried to put on you, that they have tried to say that this is who you are, and God's here to give you his identity. And I just want to encourage you today that when you walk into a room, you are a shining star. You, you draw people, and they want to know who are you. And so I just want to encourage you today that the, the labels that have been tried to have been passed down to you, I just want to today say that those need to be um, seen for what they are. They're lies from the enemy. And God is calling you today, and these are the words that he wants to speak over to you, that you are his beloved, that you are cherished, that you are redeemed, you are forgiven, and you are restored. That's what I want to bless you today with. I'm assuming that you two are a couple, and this is your little one uh, that you're holding. Uh, no need to get up, but tell me your names. Raphael? Raphael? Stephanie. 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 So I, I saw this for the two of you, that it's been a, there's, you've been in a dry season. It's, there's been a uh, anxiousness or concern about uh, the, all the things that, are, that would concern your life when, uh, when there's a dry season. But this is the, the verse I got. Psalm 33 and verse 19. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from, from death and to keep them alive in famine. Uh, this is the encouragement that I, I believe the Lord wants to give you. He's heard your prayers. <laughs> they have not fallen on deaf ears. And there, there is um, there's breakthrough that's coming. Rain is on the horizon. Provision uh, in this dry season, you've been faithful, and now you watch and see what God does. He, he will provide in a huge and powerful way. God bless you. Amen. This uh, gentleman right here, what is your name? Jason, would you stand up just a minute? I, I want to preface what I'm about to say to you by saying we've all, we all have a past, okay? We all have failures, things like that. We all do. If you, if you knew mine, you take this microphone away from me and say, I don't know if God forgave you for all that. <laughs> but here's what I believe I heard. You will not be defined by your failures. When the Lord cleanses us, he makes us clean. When the Lord restores us, he makes us new. I kept seeing this restored 57 Chevy. It's worth more today than it was when it was new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. That word behold is like a gasp. Like, can you believe this? Yes, I can. Because when God makes somebody new, and when God restores somebody, he does it completely. God bless you. Amen. Okay, yeah, nope, you just looked away. Yep, you in the orange shirt. Can you stand up? You know what? You were standing over there, but I found you. So you can't hide. Um, this is what I heard. I heard, what are you waiting for? You, young man, are a firecracker. And I actually saw this image of you being a worship leader in your home. I saw you having people that you gathered in your home, and you just ushered in the presence of the Lord. And I don't know what's holding you back. I don't know what's restraining you. But I just want to encourage you today that you need to stop. You're the one getting in the way. God's Amen. calling you. It's something that he's doing. And so you are going to see revivals break out within the walls of the house that you get to lead worship in. Amen. So I just want to encourage you. And you know what I loved? I actually could hear you singing. You didn't care. You didn't care, and that's what people need to see of this reckless abandonment. They're not going to be intimidated by people around them. They're not going to let people put them in a box and restrain them from being just unashamedly 
worshiping God. And that's what you're going to bring. Those are the kind of people that you're going to gather in your house. So I just want to encourage you. They're going to come. You just be obedient, and God will bring the people that he wants there. So you don't need to worry about it, okay? All right, bless you. Is this your daughter? Yeah. Or your friend? Daughter? My daughter? Daughter. Can I give a word to her? Sure. What, what is your name? Jasmine. Jasmine, hi, would you stand up? Jasmine, I got this word for you that you're a pretty cool cucumber. You, <laughs> you, the motto, uh, never let them see you sweat, would, uh, <laughs> would fit well for you. And here's what I feel like the Lord said is uh, in, in that, because you, you have this very uh, cool exterior, uh, it, it, there's, you, you carry things that you wouldn't have to carry if you were willing to ask somebody to help. And the Lord says, if, if you'll humble yourself and uh, submit, ask for help, be, you, know, you don't have to do it with everybody, but do it in, in selected, in, in, with wisdom, uh, spiritual advisors, your parents are, uh, and some mentors, uh, God will, will give you freedom and the, the, the beauty that's on the inside will be reflected in a way more powerful way on the outside through the humility of your life. Trust God. Here's the, here's the verse, 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6. Uh, Submit uh, to one another, but be clothed with humility for God resists the, resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he'll exalt you in due time. God bless you. What is your name? Rebecca, would you stand up? You guys together? Married or boyfriend, girlfriend? Just dating. Well, you can't stand up yet. I'm sorry. I'm kidding you. All right, Rebecca, I just heard this uh, when I walked past you tonight. I heard wisdom beyond your years. Spirit of revelation is on you. You worship and the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And you understand what the Lord's saying and what he's doing. It's like you just get it, okay? As you read the word, you hear God talking to you. And I want to exhort you and, and, and uh, encourage you. Get alone with him. He wants to talk to you about your future, your education, your calling, your purpose. He has something special for you to do. And you'll find the door to your future as you press into his presence in worship. All right? I can't wait to see what God does with you, girl. Bless you. God bless you. Hi. Are you guys together? You are? Are you married? Okay, good. Can you stand up? What's your names? Andre. Andre and Renee. So, Andre, this is kind of more for you. You actually need to hear what she has to say. There is such wisdom, and there is such... <laughs> I promise no one told me. I promise. <laughs> she has so much to offer. And you know, she is such a reflection of God that there's going to be key things that God's going to whisper to her that's going to be vital for what you need to hear. And I know as the leader that there's probably this extra pressure that you've got to have all the answers, but there's a beautiful partnership with the two of you together. And when you give her a voice, you're going to see the atmosphere in your house change. It's going to be amazing what God's going to use her to do in, in a way of doing it with, to you, but also with you. Like, you guys are amazing, and there's something that God is just wanting to do through the both of you. But if you will humble yourself and listen to what she has to say, there's going to be some amazing things that God's going to even show you in the process that will take you guys to that new level that you've been asking the Lord to take you. So bless you both. Hi. This is for you. What, what's your name? Hector. Hector, do you mind standing just a minute? Uh, Hector, uh, delay does not mean no. I felt like there's been uh, something, an anticipation or a desire, something you've been praying about or for, and it hasn't materialized. And you're thinking, well, maybe, maybe this isn't what God is going to do. Maybe it's not what he wants. And uh, 
I felt like the Lord said, a delay is not a no. Things have put into, been put into motion to answer your prayers. Uh, do not be discouraged or lose heart. Believe God. Believe God. Do what you know is right. Just continue to plant the seeds that, is, that are the right seeds in this season and allow it to germinate, fertilize, be watered. And uh, Galatians uh, 6, 9, it will apply. Don't grow weary in doing good, for in due season you shall reap if you do not faint or lose heart. God's answer is on the way that it's been put in motion and delay is not no. Amen. God bless you. This lady right here, what is your name? Oh, my God. That's your name? What a name. Oh, my gosh. Sherry, would you stand up a minute? I said that to, one time, to a man one time. I said, what is your name? And he went, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And I said, what a name. No. <laughs> I saw a construction site all around you. Dirt moving equipment, just moving dirt. Funniest thing about the vision I saw about you is angels were driving the bulldozers. And here's what I heard. Life has been tough. You've seen God move some mountains for you. Don't quit praying. Don't quit praising. Don't quit believing. The Lord comes to remove discouragement and give you joy in the middle of the labor. This mountain will move as well. And uh, that's why I wrote down, I saw bulldozers with angels as drivers. This mountain has no choice but to move. God bless you. Thank you. Hi. Are you, are you guys together? Yes? Okay, can y'all stand up? What's your name? Zoe. Zoe? What? Humphrey. Humphrey. This is what I heard when I saw the two of you. There have been some things that have come at you that actually haven't seemed very fair. And it's actually been hard. But what I heard God saying is that he's going to restructure some things that are going to make it a little bit easier now for you. And I want to encourage you that the things that haven't seemed fair haven't been because of something that's wrong with the two of you. There have just been some things in life that have just gone that way that the Lord's saying, I'm coming to intervene and I'm wanting to make it right. So I just wanted to encourage the two of you that you're going to be able to enter into a season of rest and that there's going to be a, a a way of God just unfolding to you the things that he's wanted you to see that have actually been um, just, they've been um, blinded because of the distractions of the other things that have been going on in your life. So I just want to encourage the two of you and just want to bless you and just say that this new season that's going to come is going to be one that you can say is full of joy. So bless you both. Hi. What's your name? Willie. Willie, Willie uh, uh, when, I, uh, when I was drawn to you, I, I heard this phrase or saw this phrase, uh, that train has left the station. And I, I feel like it relates to either a, an opportunity that's before you, someone that has been encouraging you to do something, or there's been a desire in your heart to do something, and you've been talking yourself out of it saying, my time has passed. That train left the station. I, I, I blew my opportunity. I, I don't, and I, I believe what God wants to remind you is he's a redeeming, faithful God who takes our yes and does miraculous things. If you'll say yes to God, the train hadn't left the station. It's just made a circle and it's coming back around. And God wants to use you in a great way if you'll say yes to him. Amen. God bless you. Back here. One of the things we, we say when doing prophetic ministry, we laugh about it. We say, if you want a word, wear red. Mm -hmm. and, and there's like a whole row of people here with red. And right in front is the leader, the gang leader right here. And not only did she wear red, she brought a red umbrella, okay? And she has a red Bible cover. And okay, I'm, I'm just having fun. But here's what I believe I heard. Tell me your name first. Kathy. Kathy. The first miracle of Jesus was at the wedding at Canaan when he turned water into wine. You remember that story? In that story, they ran out of wine. 
And Mary told Jesus, and he said, what does this have to do with me? He, he had not performed any miracle yet. Now, I think he did maybe around the house. I think that's how she knew he could turn water into wine. He'd, he'd, he'd turn some water into, into uh, orange juice or something for her one day, right? I know the Bible doesn't tell that story, but you wonder what went on in their home. How would she know? She said to the disciples and those standing around, do whatever he says. And then later, of course, he had them fill the water pots with water, and he turned the water into wine. Here's what I heard about you. You're a woman of influence. I saw you exhorting the generations under you, both physical sons and daughters and spiritual sons and daughters. And the word that kept coming out of your mouth was, just do what Jesus says to do. Just do what Jesus says to do. And when people came to you and they asked you, what do I do? You'd say, just do what Jesus said. Just do it. Nike has nothing on you, girl. God bless you. <laughs> Zeke, will you stand up? And I actually want your parents to stand up, and I had them go over and get you, so can you guys stand up next to them? Because I wanted you to see this visual as the pillars of protection that they are in your life. And this is what I heard over you. I said, I heard, you know what, in the short time that I was with you today, you are a man that is beyond your years. And you are a smart man. And you are a, a man that loves Jesus. When I was across from you, you can deny it, but there was just this light that just exuded from you that made people want to have just a little bit more of you. You are an amazing young man. But this is one thing that I wanted to just remind you that I heard the Lord say in Exodus 20, 12, it says, honor your father and mother that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. There's going to be a time where there's going to be a battle of the wills. Will I do what I want or will I submit my will to his will? Your parents have been in a been put in a place in your life to help guide you towards the destiny God has for you. And if you will submit, if you will submit to them, even when you don't like it, and you're a kid, there'll be times that you don't like it, <laughs> God will honor you. There is a promise in honoring your parents that will follow you, and God will honor you. And you know what? He will make a way to happen the things that they said, no, if it's his will, he will make a way for it to happen so you can rest in that peace. Because they, they have been put on this earth to be a guiding force. And they love you more than anybody else on this earth does. And so I just want you to remember that they're not the enemy. They're not the enemy. <laughs> because what I know is true about this, the plans that God has for you, Zeke, are too grand for me to even share with what you have now. You are a man that is going to be a leader among the leaders, and you are going to be able to withstand a lot of things that kids fall into because you have a heritage that's been passed down to you that you do know is unique. And I see you being someone that kids come to because they know that you are the one that doesn't follow the crowd. So I want to encourage you to not be someone that feels any kind of pressure, but you just stay true to who you are and let Jesus shine. Let him shine through you and you are going to be a kingdom builder and you're going to have a lot of people that go to heaven because of you. Bless you. This is for you. Yeah. Hi, what's your name? Odali, Odali, uh, Odali, you're you're a, a diligent person. When an opportunity comes your way, you dot all the I's and cross all the T's. You make sure that everything is in perfect order. And uh, you've there's something that you're there's an opportunity that's come your way, and you've you've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's, but there's a hesitation. And the, the hesitation is you, you want God to confirm 
this decision. It's a big decision that it, you're, it's an opportunity, big opportunity that God has given you. And it, you've, you want to know, do I say no or do I say yes? You, your, your diligence has leaned you a certain direction, but you've been hesitant. And this is confirmation that your due diligence has brought you to the correct place. So you don't have to hesitate anymore. You can, you can say what your due diligence has said, and God will honor it. Amen? God bless you. Amen. Right here on the back row, what is your name, sir? Armando. Armando. Is this your family? All right, all right, all right. Well, I would ask you to stand up, but you got kids on your knees, so just stay right there. Uh, have you ever watched the old movies, the Rocky movies, Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3? Have you ever watched those? Rocky 4, Rocky 5, Rocky 6, Rocky... Okay. Somewhere in the Rocky movies, he fights that guy from, from Russia, uh, Drago, and he gets beat up pretty bad, and then he goes back and he trains and he wins, right? Fast forward. Have you seen the movie Creed 2? Okay. When I walked past you, I kept seeing Adonis Creed. And, uh, and then I'd see Moses, and I'd see Adonis Creed. And I'm just like, Lord, what is going on? And here's what I believe I heard. Those who have gone before you have beat the enemy. The Lord's calling you to beat the enemy. You're going to win over the enemies of your forefathers because they won first, especially Jesus. Okay? So I don't want to get too much into the movie here, but here's what I believe. Moses came out of Egypt the first time for himself. He had a burning bush experience, and God sent him back in, not to live, not to stay, but to deliver and to rescue. He went back for them. He went back for family. He went back for friends. He went back for the people of God. You came out of bondage because the Lord set you free. Why in the world would you go back, people would say. You're not going back to stay. You're going back to get those you love. You're going back to get those Jesus died for. Go back and get them. There's, a, there's, there's an evangelism calling on you. There's a fighter in you that will not let the enemy take your family down. God gave you that. Not just this family. But there are family members that are lost. And there are people that are members of God's family that are lost. And God's given you the authority to reach them. So learn how to share Christ well. Because God wants to use you to set them free. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Can we thank the Lord? Can we thank the Lord tonight? Amen. Why don't you stand? Why don't you stand with me? God bless you for being here. Thank you to uh, our family from Gateway. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful night. Uh, I want to I wanna pray for us and then uh, ask you to go grab your kiddos now. <laughs> All right, on, on this hour. Uh, I want to pray for our offering as well tonight. Father, thank you for the grace that you give us to live, the extension of your mercy to us. Thank you, God, for our apostolic covering from Gateway, thank you for the impartation tonight. Thank you, God, that we leave here seeing covering and love and grace and wisdom, and we hold in our hearts all the things that you have said. Thank you that you have blessed so many, and we receive those words as we leave. We take them into our, our homes to nurture them and, and grow them in you. Father, we offer you our lives, and we offer you our, our resource tonight. We thank you for all that you're doing in the life of the church at the crossing. We thank you for the campuses. We thank you for all the men and women who are seeing Christ in a new way, in a fresh way. And we ask that you would continue to give us grace to reach those who you've called us to reach in this city and beyond. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Give somebody a high five, good hug on your way out. God bless you. We'll see you this weekend. <laughs>